Hi, thank you for joining us today at Rivers of Living Water Cathedral, 604 Holland Street in Fremont, Ohio. I know God's word will be a blessing to you today. And join me now as we hear what God has placed upon the heart of Reverend Brenda Lau. on this beautiful fall day. Yes. We're just beginning a new season. <laughs> We're in the season of harvest. Yes. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the season of spring, the season of planting your seeds in our lives, and the season of summer where all the seeds have grown. And we've come to a point now of a season of harvest. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done in our lives. We thank you for bringing us to this point. We thank you for your word of wisdom and knowledge. And we pray that you, Lord, open our eyes and our ears of understanding to receive what you have planted in us, to harvest in us today. I bind every hindering and distracting spirit that has come along with us to steal, kill, and destroy what the Lord has put in our hearts and the word that he has for us today. Lord, you inhabit our praise. And you are here with us this morning. We have come to you with open hearts praising and glorifying your name. Let my mouth be your mouth. We are listening, Lord. Speak to us. Your servants are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. My message today is titled, Can a Christian Have Demons? To answer this question, We'll be looking at the beginning and the ending of Jesus' ministry. In Mark 1.15, Jesus is telling us about how he begins. Verse 15 says, And saying, the appointed period of time is fulfilled. Jesus is now saying, the appointed time is fulfilled. What happened right before this was the wedding in Cana, where his mom was telling him, trying to convince him to work miracles at the wedding to please the people. And Jesus is telling her, it's not time yet. He still had to go through being baptized by John and having the Holy Spirit fall on him. And he still had to go through being tested 40 days and nights in the wilderness by Satan. And then he says, the appointed period of time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. This is important because he doesn't say the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven tells us about heaven and life with God when we're dead. But he says the kingdom of God is at hand. And in Luke 17, 21, he tells us the kingdom of God is within us. When he says the kingdom of God is at hand and the appointed time is here, he's alluding to his salvation, to, he's alluding to salvation through him, through his impending death and resurrection and the coming of of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit within us. Jesus begins his ministry by introducing salvation through him as God promised in the Old Testament. And he goes on to give us instructions. Repent. Change your inner self and your old way of thinking. Regret past sins. Live your life in a way that proves repentance. Seek God's purpose for your life. 
and believe with a deep abiding trust in the good news regarding salvation. So Jesus' instructions, after he gives us the information of his impending death and resurrection and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, he gives us an instruction. Repent. Change your inner self. Your old way of thinking. How do we do that? By regretting our past sins and not repeating them. This requires a willful change of your thoughts and habits by seeking God's purpose for your life and living in a way that proves your repentance. When we get, when we get a new phone, we go through the manual, and we read everything about it, and we're so excited, we get a new phone. We go through all the apps, and we get to learn everything about the phone. We can use it to Google our questions. If you have something on your heart, you have issues in your life, you can Google an answer. You can call, you can text, you can email your friends, your family, somebody across the world to look for your answers. You can even use the GPS to find your way where you're going. But Jesus is telling us by his word, by reading and studying your Bible, that's where you find the answers to your questions in your life. That's how you change your thoughts and your habits by seeking the word of God and in strengthening the Holy Spirit within you. And that's where you find your directions. You don't need a GPS for your life. You have one in your Bible. That's your directions for your life. So what does this have to do with a Christian having demons? This is the first step after salvation. It's the baby steps. It's the drinking the milk of God's steps. It's the first steps of deliverance. Repenting. Changing your thoughts and habits. Those are the drinking the milk of God's steps. Those are the steps towards deliverance. So remember these instructions. Because we're going to be referring back to them. But first, let's look at the Hebrew definition of salvation. <clears throat> there are six different contextual meanings throughout the Bible regarding salvation personal, national, or spiritual rescue, deliverance, health, victory, saving health, to be set free from trouble, avenging deliverer. Salvation in Christ is deliverance from everything. It's being saved and delivered from all things. Again, what does this have to do with a Christian having demons? How do we know a Christian can have them? Let's look at Mark 21 through 27. After Jesus gives us his information and his instructions, he goes and he puts it into practice. Mark 1, 21. <clears throat> Jesus went and he commissioned Peter and Andrew and James and John to be fishers of men. They went to Capernaum and immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus went to the synagogue and began to teach. The synagogue is a place of worship. The synagogue was a church. It was a place where believers went to learn the word of God. They went there to learn the ways of God, how to live their life according to God's laws and precepts. Verse 22. They were completely amazed at his teaching because he was teaching them as one having God-given authority and not as the scribes. The scribes taught the letter of the law. They were oppressors and policed the people 
to live according to the law, but they themselves didn't live it. So by not living it, they took the authority out of their teachings. And they were amazed that Jesus taught with God-given authority because Jesus, they didn't know this yet, that he lived his life according to what he heard God tell him. He repeated it. He obeyed every word that God told him. And it showed in his deeds and in his actions. So when you live by, by the Holy Spirit and by the precepts of God, he gives you authority in your words and in your actions. Verses 22, 23 and 24. Just then, there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit. And he cried out terribly from the depths of his throat, saying, What business do you have with us, Jesus of Nazareth? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. The man said, Us, demons, and a believer, in the church. The demons were angry because of the presence of Jesus, because up until this point, they had free reign in the believers. And they knew he had come to cast them out. Verse 25 and 26. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. The unclean spirit threw the man into convulsions and screeching with a loud voice came out of him. Jesus commanded the demon out of the man. Not off of him, not from being around him, but out of the man's body. He wasn't wearing the demon-like clothing. It was in the man's body, speaking through his mouth, being a part of the man's thoughts. Seemingly like he was a part of the man's personality, using the man's mind, will, and emotions. Verse 27. They were also amazed that they debated and questioned each other, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the demons and they obey him. They debated and question each other, what is this? As believers, they were used to seeing their friends and their family and their co-workers in church speaking and acting in godly ways. They knew of the presence of demons within themselves and within, within others. They were used to that. They knew about that. What they weren't used to was casting them out. When they were taught the letter of the law of Moses, they knew what God's blessings were. They knew what his curses were. If you disobeyed God, you received curse. You received demons. If you obeyed God, you received blessings. And they were used to Seeing this, it was a part of their everyday lives. But what they weren't used to was the authority of being able to cast them out. So now we understand that demons can be a Christian. The question now is, how do they get in and where inside of us do they live? 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, we are body, soul, and spirit. The Greek definition of soul is the mind, will, and emotions. Our spirit is from God. And our soul is our mind, will, and emotion. And our flesh, our body, is the house that contains everything. Galatians 5.17 for the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another. Demons cannot live in our spirit 
because they cannot live where the Spirit of God lives. So that leaves our body and our souls. So how do they get in? Revelations 3.20 Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Any door to your mind, will, and emotions, demons can enter. They must have a legal right to enter. They can't just enter at their own will. They have to have a legal right. That's why it's important to guard the doors of your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your senses, and your your heart. They can live in our bodies and cause sickness. They can manifest in our mind and in our emotions, occasionally taking over our words and actions. <clears throat> but they cannot take over our free will consistently. So what gives a demon the legal right to enter an open door? Willful, habitual sin. It's not a one-time sin where you pray for forgiveness and you don't repeat it. It's willful, habitual sin. I'm going to do this because I like it and I want to. Willful, habitual sin. Doing occult activities, horoscopes, astrology, numerology, engaging in occult activities, witchcraft, seeking a psychic, having your tarot card read. Even the movies that you watch, the TV programs that you watch, and the games that you play. They can enter through generational. My parents were like that. My grandparents were like that. And I'm like that. But it's an ungodly behavior. And it's a generational. Unforgiveness. Having bitterness, hate, and anger in your heart and not forgiving people. They come in through trauma and abuse. That's not your fault, but it's an open door. Ungodly soul ties, fornication, sex out of marriage, adultery, those are ungodly soul ties. You can, not, you can also get them through having unhealthy emotional and mental ties to a person. You, they can come in through curses, like we said about Deuteronomy and the curses and the blessings of God. When you sin, there are curses, there are consequences that God ordained. Addictions, drugs, alcohol, pornography, sex. Irrational fears and phobias. It's not, it's not about like being afraid of a spider. They can't enter because you're afraid of a spider. It's, it's like old wives' tales, not walking under a ladder. Irrational fears and phobias. And false religion. There's a lot of that going on today. And we're not going to go there, but y'all know about that. There are four stages of demonization. These stages I got from a well-known deliverance minister, but I received the revelation by the Holy Spirit. I was at stage four when I gave my life to Christ. And I received deliverance by going through Jesus' instructions in Mark 1.15. Repenting, changing my inner self, changing my old thoughts and habits, and not repeating past sins, willfully seeking God's purpose for my life, and having a deep, deep trust in the saving blood of Jesus Christ. There were some that I needed to seek outside for deliverance. But for the most part, through prayer 
and seeking God's purpose for my life and repentance, he delivered me from most of them. He delivered me from all of them. But self-deliverance is a possibility. Stage one, infestation. They occupy houses, property, or objects, especially where a murder, rape, or cult activities were, were performed. They attack belongings and not a person, like things moving, hearing noises, footsteps, and smelling odors. Stage two is oppression, sleep disturbance, nightmares, illnesses, major anxiety and depression, job, financial, and relationship issues. And these happen all at once or in very rapid order. It's not normal everyday life. We all have issues in life. But it is oppression when they happen, when they happen all at once or in rapid succession. Number three, obsession. You have a hard time functioning. You're constantly hearing intrusive, vulgar, and harmful thoughts from the demons. The voices and the impulses are pushing and driving your life. It's impossible to sleep and you're at the height of torment. You can't do anything on your own because the emotions and the thoughts of these demons are driving your life. They're driving your mind and your emotions. Stage four, possession. This does not mean a demon owning or taking over your body and soul. Your free will is never removed, only severely compromised. Spiritually, mentally, and physically broken down by the first three stages. <coughs> and demons take occasional control over your actions. You have episodes of self-hurt, outbursts, and suicide. So can I get real and transparent with you guys? You want to hear some real life stories? I said I was stage four when I met Jesus and gave my life to him. And demons come in through certain open doors of trauma and abuse and generational and false religion. From two to 18, I was beaten, raped, molested, and tortured by my dad and my stepmom. By the time I reached my 20s, I had anxiety and depression so bad it was debilitating. I was married and I had two babies and I couldn't function. I couldn't hold conversations with people. I couldn't hold a job. My marriage was falling apart, and I ended up losing my children. I was ready to commit myself to a mental hospital because the voices that I heard and the emotions were so overwhelming. My family was convinced that I had multiple personalities because they didn't know who they were going to talk to. They didn't know what I was going to do next, and neither did I. I had periods of lost time, and people were always telling me of things that I did that I had no memory of doing. I tried suicide many, many times. I was eight the first time and 45 the last, and I can't tell you how many times in between. I was constantly sick with one problem or disease to the next, and I lived with those multiple personalities for 40 years. But the week I met Jesus, I prayed. I 
I was writing a journal at that time. And I want to read to you what happened and how Jesus delivered me from those demons. This is from my journal, the week of April 18th, 2017. Tuesday. <clears throat> Screamer keeps piping up nonsense tunes. She interrupts my thinkings and memories. It's too uncomfortable for her. I, I pray to find out why she exists and to be able to take her off so I can put on peace and joy. She's mad because there's a lot she didn't get to do. Gimme, gimme, gimme. I said, how do you think I feel all these years? You guys doing everything and I just got to watch. Are you created from the flesh? I'm created from a God, from God, are you? We don't know. We pray for God to tell us. I feel she needs to leave or put on the robe that God gives her. Her behavior is unacceptable when she distracts everything. Thursday. There's been a voice that is not my own. It pops up at random times and says the most guile, negative, and selfish things. It makes me stop when I'm conversing about and ask, who is that? It's a chameleon. It's been hiding behind Screamer and pretending to be her voice. Being nonverbal, it's an impossibility. That's why she's been bursting out with nonsense tunes and getting out of joint. The chameleon has been there since early memories. What about me? Gimme, gimme, gimme. What it wants? All earthly things. It's not of us. We pray in Jesus' name to remove it. The question, the question of what God wants to do with the rest of them is being patiently waited on for an answer. Friday. Hallelujah. <laughs> After praying yesterday, I feel very different. The first two things I noticed were the conversation stopped. It's quiet. Kind of like when I was given Adam in, except they weren't angry or sleeping. They're willfully quiet. The second thing I noticed was feeling even emotionally. The anxiety. Not just that. I don't know how to describe it. All the spectrum of feelings and emotions from the others is gone. At least they were yesterday and so far this morning. I don't feel chaos and scrambling thoughts. I hear myself and the Holy Spirit. Peace. Be still. Thank you, Lord. I have been free from those demons since that day. So when Jesus began his ministry, he gave us information and instruction on salvation and deliverance through him. Mark 1.15 tells us how you can close the doors to the demons by praying, by changing, by repenting, by willfully changing your thoughts and your habits learning and studying the Word of God, filling yourself with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus, His words. And then by doing that, you're closing the doors on the demons, and they cannot live where the Holy Spirit is. Mark, this is how Jesus ended his ministry. He told us what to do. He gave us information and instructions. And in Mark 6, 6, 16, 15 through 18, after his resurrection, he commissions us. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed in me 
and has been baptized will be saved from the penalty of God's wrath and judgment. You will be saved from the curses. You will be saved from all your bad choices. You'll be saved from all of your bad thoughts. You'll be saved from the wrath of God for your sins. But he who has not believed will be condemned. If you don't change your thoughts, if you don't change your mind, you're going to die and go to hell. You're going to be eternally tormented. You think your life is torment now because you don't repent? It's too late after you die, and it's going to be a thousand times worse. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name, they will cast out demons. That's the first thing, the first action that Jesus did when he went to the synagogue was to cast demons out of believers. And he's given us the power and authority to do the same. They will speak in new tongues. It's not about speaking in your prayer language. It's about <laughs> changing your life, changing your thoughts, changing your habits. You speak differently. You speak life into your life. You no longer speak death. You speak with the tongue of God. Yes. They will pick up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will get well. Jesus commissioned us to go into the world and tell people of his death and resurrection and the Holy Spirit that is within you. You just have to repent and receive. And he tells us we have the power to cast demons out of our friends and our families and even strangers. He tells us we have his power and authority to lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. And now we understand a Christian can have demons. We understand how they can get in. We understand how to get rid of them. And we understand that we can have self-deliverance by reading the Word of God and changing our inner self and our thoughts. And there are times we have to seek others to cast them out of us. Thank you. Amen. What a word from the Lord today. Friend us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you'll get notified the very next time that we post. Those who live in the Fremont, Ohio area, you are invited to come Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. for a time of studying God's Word and building your foundation in Him. Or come next Sunday for a time of family worship at 10 a.m. We're located at 604 Howland Street in Fremont. Prayer warriors faithfully take every prayer request that we receive to the Lord. Send your prayer request for any financial blessing to us at Post Office Box 1323, Fremont, Ohio. You can also go to our website, rolwohio.com, and you can link to us through our email, social media posts, or you can link to our PayPal account. We look forward to hearing from you. Remember, there is no God like our God knows.